Quick question for you. What is the single most greatest game of all time? I think my answer might be a little bit surprising to you. Back when SpongeBob SquarePants was still a thing and the American president did not have orange hair, I used to play a lot of video games. And by playing, I mean sucking at video games. Like hard. Really hard. Nevertheless, the games I enjoyed most are also the games that are not very much around anymore. And these are player versus player pure skill games. Skill games? What are skill games? Skill games, so pretty much games where the outcome of the game is only dependent on your skill and your skill alone. Not about what level you are, what weapon you have, or if you bought 50,000 red jewels for $600 with your mom's credit card to get the sword of the fallen sorcerer. However, in recent years, the trend has totally gone to games where you can reach levels and collect equipment. You know, games which require you to play a lot instead of playing really good. Basically, games these days are like that woman in kindergarten where when you showed her you three red lines on paper saying that this represents the sun, a house and your family. She's like, that looks great. You are something special. And... That's basically the same with games these days. You get achievements for everything. Literally everything. And I get it. From a publisher side of view, this totally makes sense. Having your users invest a maximum amount of playtime in your game, giving them items to strive for, which you can monetize, totally makes sense. But this leaves me with very little amount of games where you can actually measure your pure skills against someone else. For example, my favorite game, and also the, I think, purest skill game ever is, drumroll please, chess. Think about it. Both players start out with exactly the same figures, both have exactly the same amount of moves they can do, and all that counts is being smarter than your enemy. There is no levels, there is no secret weapons, it's just pure skill. So I have actually often thought about making my own game which can achieve that. Well, there's just one tiny problem there. While I do consider myself quite a reasonable programmer, I don't really have much knowledge about modeling, animations or making stuff look good at all. So it would be pretty hard to make a full game. Also, I don't really have the time to learn all that stuff because, you know, I have a private life and... Coronavirus. A virus. Coronavirus. From the virus. The coronavirus. The virus. The coronavirus outbreak will present significant challenges. We might be asked to work from home. The president has made a decision to spend all travel to the United Kingdom. Businesses are in deep trouble. We are going to do whatever it takes. Well, I guess I'll be making a game then. So first things first. I need an idea, then a concept, and then some very quick fingers. So let's figure out what the game is actually going to be. After doing some research for a while, I figured that I wanted to make a mobile game. Publishing to Xbox or PlayStation is quite a hard process and publishing to Steam isn't exactly a walk in the park either. Like literally, it's freaking hard. Also, the number of persons that own a mobile phone is much higher than the number of people owning gaming consoles or have Steam downloaded to their PC. In fact, you can see that all gaming consoles and Steam users combined sum up to 249 million, while Android and iOS users sum up to 2.8 billion. So I guess I see a little more potential in the phone market. This decision already provided me with a frame for my game. <laughs> I can't use AAA graphics, or in my case, I probably should rather say I don't have to worry about them. And the game must be fun to play with touch controls, which also narrows down the frame of what kind of games would be fun to do, because let's face it, using that little corner of your phone as a joystick just freaking sucks. After that, I needed to decide what type of game it should be. For that, I really listened to myself. Because I need to stay motivated to finish this game. And to do that, the game must be something that I really enjoy playing. So I sat down and started hitting my head against the wall to find out what I would really enjoy. And I came up with this.
Get it? No? Okay. Well, I always really enjoyed great sword fights in movies or animes, and I thought, why not make a sword fight game? So that means I now end up with these requirements. It needs to be a skill game, it needs to be about sword fights, it needs to be playable on mobile, and low poly 3D graphics because I can't draw 2D and, you know, AAA is kind of ruled out. And after I came up with the sword fighting idea, my head actually began just exploding with ideas and possibilities that I could implement. Six and a half hours later. Well, maybe not right away. Originally, what I thought of was making a game where you could measure your skill with someone else just by having a sword fight. However, I find that just clicking a few buttons and having the player perform a move would probably result in a more knucklehead kind of Tekken style game, which I don't like that much. So I wanted something that was a little bit more strategy intensive. So I thought, why not make this whole thing more of an action strategy game? So you would have two players. One is called Ben, and the other one is called Sam, because I think those are cool names, okay? Each of them have the same set of moves that they can do. Each move brings them in a different position, aka attacks the enemy in a different spot or blocks an attack in a different spot. So for example, there is a move called Slay Top. If Ben taps that move, like he taps that Aos, his character begins to swing his weapon towards Sam's head. But the attack is not executed completely, but is only shown in the beginning and then the scene goes into slow motion. So now it is Sam's turn, and since the scene is in slow motion, he can see what his opponent is going to do, in that case, swing his sword to his head. Now he has to choose a move to either block or counterattack Ben's move or maybe dodge it. And after each move, the character will end up in a different position. So for example, after the head slash, Ben's arms and sword would be still pointing down. So he would now be more vulnerable to attacks that Sam could perform than he was before. So in that way, the fight will turn into more of a chess game. Instead of just hacking and slaying away at your opponent, you have to anticipate your opponent's move and carefully plan your next, because each move brings you in a different position from where you have new risks and opportunities. Now I'm still thinking about the exact details of the combat system and how to make it not super complicated, but still feel like a real-time sword fight, but I really love the idea of this action strategy approach, so that's what I'm gonna go with. So there we go. I'm building a full-blown game for the first time, really curious to see how this will turn out. I do still have a full-time job and some other side projects going on, which will not allow me to work on this full-time, and will probably also F up my timeline and release date completely, but hey, as they say, I'm gonna try to release on August 30. So if you want to follow along on this journey, make sure to subscribe and click that bell to get notified when I post another devlog and I'm going to try upload a new devlog every week. However, due to other things, maybe sometimes two weeks. And so also, if you have any additional ideas for the game, I would love to hear them. So let me know in the comments down below. Also leave this video a like if you enjoyed it. That's it for this video. Next time we will actually start the new project and see where we can get to. Till then, stay safe, stay healthy, stay home and peace.